Good morning, YouTube friends and family, and welcome to today's edition of The Wellness Homesteader. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kim. I'm so glad that you're here. And I wanna start this video by sharing a recipe that's super simple that has been requested and it's been on my list for a little bit. So the question was, what do I put in my protein shakes? Well, the answer isn't a simple one because I do it differently every day, kind of depending on the mood that I'm in. But I thought I would share this recipe because it is absolutely delicious and pretty much guilt-free. So, first thing I'm going to do is get the spoon out that I forgot to get because y'all know I never get everything out, right? So I have a Nutribullet. You can use any type of blender to do this. And I've placed about eight ounces of the um, unsweetened vanilla almond milk in and four ice cubes. That's just how I like it. You could also freeze your almond milk if you want more of that flavor and less water. So to that, I am adding a scoop of my vanilla birthday cake protein powder it is so good and i get this from lady boss lean hey, yes there's a defect in the lid um, it is one of the most complete and digestible proteins i have ever found so that's why i use that to this i am going to add some powdered peanut butter and guys this has much less fat and you can find the Great Value brand now in the big canisters. It's one of the things I have in my long-term pantry. So I'm going to use mm, about three-quarters of a scoop of that peanut butter powder. And now comes the magic. I am not a huge fan of chocolate. If you do like chocolate, you would um, add a little bit of cocoa powder and... Now what I'm going to add is some sugar-free butterscotch jello pudding. And you need, hmm, okay, let me try to guess here. That's a tablespoon and a half. So what this is, is my version of a Butterfinger milkshake, but with a healthy twist. <laughs> actually much better for you than if you have a sweet tooth like I do, much better than having donuts or pancakes or something that has little to no protein in it. So just shake it up and it's gonna be loud, so let me blend that. Now, if you like it really thick and more milkshake consistency, you are definitely gonna want to freeze your almond milk. Yeah, don't waste any of it, guys. Lick your fingers loudly like I did. Oh. And there you have it. It is. Just like the inside of a Butterfinger. Delicious, nutritious, over 10 grams of protein and gets me ready to start my day. Speaking of which, it's after seven. I'm going to give a quick chat to my mom and then I'm going to take you along today for some crafting and maybe some decorating for fall. I've been trying not to show a whole bunch of stuff because I have been working for a couple days on decor. It takes me forever, guys forever. But I want to share some um, ideas and some easy, inexpensive craft ideas with you. So stay tuned. So for today's Halloween craft, you are going to need an old hardcover book, a glue gun, some extra glue sticks, some tissue paper, and it could really be any color or brand. And I started out trying to use these worms. You'll see what happens. And then some kind of decorative embellishment for the center of your book, along with some Mod Podge. And then finally, paint colors of your choice to paint up your creepy book. So I started out thinking I was extremely brilliant. 
I had looked and looked for creepy things to use on my book and I already had these spiders on hand but I wanted some rubber snakes and I literally went to Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart. I could not find anything that resembled a snake. So I thought I was so smart, I went back into the sporting goods department of Walmart and I purchased these 96 cent fishing lures. So guys, I will tell you ahead of time, it did not work. And I think I've cut a lot of this video out where I was fiddling and fussing and having problems. Um, I am not a fisher person by <laughs> trade. I uh, have no experience really fishing. So I'm not sure, but it feels like those worms may have been covered or coated or saturated with some type of an oily substance that made them an epic fail. However, I do think if you had some hard plastic uh, spiders, I'm sorry, not spiders, snakes or worms that you might be more successful. So I tried so many different things. I'm showing you first my mini glue gun. And in case you're wondering what that little spatula is, that is actually a makeup spatula that you can buy in the makeup section at Dollar Tree. And it's a great tool for not burning your fingers. So I'm just putting loads and loads and loads of glue onto this little worm. And again, this is a low heat gun. Well, guys, see all the glue that stuck to the book but did not stick to the worms. I literally fiddled with this for like 30 minutes. So then I got the bright idea. Maybe it was the paper on the book that was slick. And guys, let me tell you, <laughs> it made no difference. It was something about the worms that I chose. So here I go again. I decide I'm going to continue to try with those worms. But honestly, guys, they never, ever stick. So I did waste um, some glue. I mean, glue sticks are inexpensive, but I encourage you not to use fishing lures when you're trying to create this design. You're going to see in just a moment that I completely abandon this idea and I move on to something that is so much cheaper and so much easier to do than what I was trying to do with those worms. I think if I could have found the plastic snakes, that would have been really, really neat. So back I go with more glue gun and my little spatula. At least I didn't burn myself on this attempt. And That's I continue to try to glue for a lot of minutes, guys. And I will just tell you, every time I thought I had them glued down, it didn't work. So since I was using the mini glue gun, I actually went upstairs and got my older high temp glue gun, different type of glue stick. I don't care what I used. These simply would not stick. So I'm thinking they have to be impregnated with something that prevents them from sticking. But I left this part in because I wanted to show you if you do have like regular rubber snakes or worms that you want to use, this would be the method I would recommend for getting them adhered to your book. And you'll see from time to time through the video, yep, another glue stick here. Um, Frankie will come up and ask me what I'm doing. So yes, my cat does get on the table even though he's not supposed to. And he spends his life on the countertops. So, you know, cat's rule. He certainly does not listen when it comes to that. I don't know if you can hear him in the background. He's actually meowing as I'm trying to do this voiceover because I'm not petting him and that's how Frankie rolls. He always needs to be the center of attention. So I'm just picking off the excess glue, which I do recommend that you do however you're going to embellish the front of your book. And more gluing, more gluing, more gluing. And I don't know if I show this or not, but I get all done and I think, yes, I've got it. And then they just roll off. 
I do recommend that you remove your center embellishment if you don't want to get glue on it because I struggle with that as well. And you can see me picking at things. Um, I just hit a lot of strings because I was using so much glue. And I've completely abandoned the spatula at this point because the glue um, was underneath the worm and I wasn't having problems with it getting on my hands. So I'm thinking, yes, I've got this. I've totally got this. They're all firm, they're all good. And what would happen each and every time is as that glue cooled, they started to separate. So you can see me gluing down heads and tails. And wow, I spent a lot of time on this, didn't I guys? And now another glue stick. <laughs> <laughs> because if a whole glue stick didn't work, maybe two will. So I'm continuing on here. I will say I do like the little glue gun I purchased from Amazon, and I will leave a link to that below. It is much easier to control than my old style, and it's not the fault of the glue gun or even the... I use Gorilla Glue Sticks. That was not the issue. It was something about those worms. Now... Now you can see me in disgust ripping the worms off. And at that point, I was totally ready to quit. So I thought, well, I really can make worms with a glue gun. So you'll see now I've switched to my regular size glue gun and I am just creating squiggles and lines to look like snakes or worms. And at the end, I am trying to make a bigger glob so that it does look like the head of a snake and guys i wish i would have thought of this the first time you can do so many great things with the glue gun i think it's one of the best craft of in inventions ever so you'll see me continue around here and i started making the spiders, I'm sorry, the uh, worms or snakes, really symmetrical. And I quickly realized that I wanted a little bit more of a random look. So I started doing some additional application to the heads so that they looked more like a snake head. And you could even paint these. Now that I have this down pat, I would love to make another one because I think I could do it in about a quarter of the time now that I've discovered all the tips, tricks, and secrets. So you just want to go around, make it look however you want it to look. Right now I'm just making the heads so that it looks more like snakes. And actually at this point, once I quit trying to fiddle with the worms, the craft became a lot more enjoyable. So I just continue on with making more lines and squiggles so that it is pleasing to the eye. Once that glue is set up and dried, I'm gonna grab some Mod Podge here. And I just use a paper plate and a foam brush and I start by applying the Mod Podge fairly heavily to the top one-third of the book. Uh, you could do about half at a time for the size of book that I was using, but you don't want to coat the whole book because the tissue paper will have a tendency to tear. Now, since we're going to paint this, even if you have small tears, it's not a huge issue. I just found that it was easier to control if I did small sections at a time. The other thing, in a minute here, I'm gonna pick up the tissue paper and I'm gonna start laying it down. I would recommend you cut your tissue paper to the size that you want before you start laying it on your book because I had an entire sheet of tissue paper to battle as I was trying to 
finish up laying the tissue paper over those glue snakes that I had made. So what I'm doing now is just removing any big globs and then I'm going to start laying the tissue paper down. Now you do want to overlap. I covered the entire spine. You want some at the top, some at the bottom, and you want to start patting that in. Now, as I said, you're going to have wrinkles. You're going to have some bubbles. That's normal uh, because you're laying a flat piece of paper over a very now curved surface. I then took more Mod Podge once I kind of got it started and put over the top of it. If you're familiar with using Mod Podge, normally you would let the bottom coat dry first, then apply a top coat if you don't want your paper to wrinkle or bubble. But since this is supposed to be an old creepy book, I decided that the more wrinkles and bubbles, the better. So I'm sort of dabbing it on rather than brushing it. Brushing tended to want to stretch or tear the tissue paper. And it was much easier, in my opinion, to dab. You do have to go back and get, again, those large pieces or globs of Mod Podge out. But as you can see, our book is starting to take shape. We're starting to get those really incredibly uh, prominent lines from the snakes and again I'm just pushing out bubbles and then after I got the top one-third pretty well secured I went ahead and completed the entire bottom of the book I thought it was much easier uh, once I had it started but again I do recommend that you trim that tissue paper down so that you're not fussing with a whole big sheet because that did certainly take me more time, I think. You know, I do a lot of things for the first time ever on my channel and I probably should practice beforehand, but this is real life crafting and sometimes it goes really smoothly and quickly and sometimes it's incredibly frustrating. So I'm just dabbing it there in the spine of the book to make sure that that paper goes down into the spine so that the book does look like a book when you get finished. So more padding, more smoothing, and in just a moment I'll pick up the Mod Podge and I will then put a top coat on. You know, it was very odd not to be talking during the video and I found that it seemed to take me longer because I got fussy and I forgot what I was really doing, <laughs> i.e. making a video, guys. So I'm learning. It's taken me a year, but I'm learning editing. I'm learning all sorts of things. So this is sort of a sticky thing. And you're going to see me here pick up my scissors and trim down the tissue paper that should have been trimmed at first. So I left about an inch all the way around, plus a little more on the spine, and I think I actually trimmed the spine off camera. When you get ready to do the inside of the book, what I did was just brush some Mod Podge on the actual book, not on the tissue paper. And then of course, if you close the book, you're going to have some dilemmas or some problems with all that glue sticking to the first page of your book. So I ended up just popping in, you could use wax paper. I happen to have a bag of glue sticks sitting there and plastic wrap that worked absolutely fine. And again, I'm just smoothing that part down because that's not part that people are gonna see, but you want the front of your book to look really neat. For the corners, I just mitered it as you would if you were putting a flat sheet on top of your bed and then make sure you close the book so that you know you're not distorting it so that you've got a nice crisp edge or an edge that you like the looks of. So I think I start with a pair of scissors in there 
because that's what was handy, but ended up switching to something that was plastic. So I'm getting ready to trim off the spine. And just double checking. And you can see my pages had started to stick together, so I guess that's when I figured out I needed something to kind of hold that book up. And anything that's puckered or popped up, I just reinforced with a little bit more Mod Podge. And since this is supposed to look like a very old book, you don't have to be too terribly fussy. So I'm showing you now the completed book with tissue paper on top. So now I'm going to paint it and you've got some options. I have a couple types of paint. The Craft Smart paint is what I end up using for painting the entire book. That is actually black chalkboard paint. I was a little leery of the gloss paint because I was afraid the book would look too new. So I know someone's going to say something <laughs> because there never fails when there's a video if I'm writing or doing a craft. Someone will say, why do you do some things right-handed and some things left-handed? And guys, that's just how I'm built. Um, I'm a lefty righty, so certain things I can only do left handed, other things I can do right handed. So that's why you see me painting sometimes with my right hand, sometimes with my left hand. So it does take some time to get into all those crevices. You do want to let that Mod Podge completely dry. I did use a heat gun because I don't have great patience and just I just painted small sections at a time, making sure that I covered all of the white tissue paper. And the book actually was blue, and you saw where I peeled the blue off and left black, but there were still pieces of blue on the spine. Once you paint it, you will not notice what color it is. So I'm just showing you here what it's gonna look like. So here is our completely painted book nice and dry and now i'm going to switch to using arteza acrylic colors so i am using a purple and a silvery purple and i also grab some silver you want to use a dry brush and you could even use a wider brush than what i used and i'm going to start here with the deep purple And then I am going to load my brush. And then just kind of brush it out so it's well distributed through those dry bristles. And then I dab it on a paper towel and going in mostly the same direction. I went bottom to top. You could certainly go top to bottom, but I went vertically versus horizontally and this did take a little bit more paint than I thought but this brush tended to absorb the paint rather than to distribute it these are actually oil painting brushes but I just grabbed what I had handy so what I'm doing here is lightly brushing that purple paint over the top and it's grabbing primarily on the raised edges as well as some of the wrinkles and you'll notice I go around the edges of the book so that it looks well worn, like the black cover is worn away and purple underneath is showing. Anytime you make a mistake, you can use a wet baby wipe to kind of clear that up. I was just using actually a damp paper towel and it worked fine for me. So this is really the fun part of the project because it begins to take on a very, very Halloween look. Quite creepy and mysterious and very unlike whatever book you started with. I debated on using that hot pink book in the background, but I wasn't sure how well it would cover. And given the frustration I had with the worms, I'm really glad I didn't. 
So I think you can see pretty well in the recording how the worms or the snakes are beginning to pop up and have some definition from that matte chalk paint, the black background. And guys, I apologize if you can hear uh, major construction going on in the background. Yes, they are still working on my gas line or the gas line. It doesn't belong to me. It services many communities. Uh, I'm switching around here because I wanted to add some of that same bright purple paint to the spine. And there was some gold lettering on the spine of this book. And it just showed through a little letter here, a little letter there, and I kind of liked that look. So I didn't go back and add more matte black paint. If that bothers you, you could certainly do two coats on your black paint. And you could also do the back cover. I did not, since this is strictly a display piece. So I'm just fiddling, as I so often do when I craft. And that's what makes things take forever. <laughs> but that's part of the fun of crafting, is making it your own, making it like you like it. So I'm just showing you here all the beautiful purple hues that are now showing through on the book. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the silvery purple paint and a clean dry brush. And now I am just concentrating on hitting those raised snakes or actually hot glue strips. And I do go a little bit around the edges again to make it look old and worn. And the drier your brush, honestly, the easier it is. So what I'm using to kind of distribute the paint on my brush is an old coffee can lid. I have used this plastic lid <laughs> for years. I have a couple of them. They're just perfect. They wash well. Um, so you could even use a paper plate, whatever works well for you. I don't happen to have a paint palette. Okay, so I finally have finished up my silver markings and I am ready to glue that creepy, creepy spider right in the middle of our book. And yes, I know I used a lot of hot glue because I was not having another worm experience. So I'm just holding him in place for just a moment, picking away all the hot glue gun strings. And then here in just a moment, you're gonna see me pick up that dark purple again. I was going to try to put a little bit of that purple paint onto, it's actually sequins, to cover up just a little bit of hot glue that I got onto the spider. And there, folks, you have it. Is Frankie, that not I'm gorgeous? Say hello. Frankie has not been featured for just a minute, so he wanted to be on today's video. Yeah, there's a pretty kitty in that camera. Okay, go play. I hope you've enjoyed today's craft video. I have to tell you guys, this was so much fun. And I think it just turned out beautifully, including the spine. So drop me a comment below. Do you just decorate for fall or do you also decorate for Halloween? My house is primarily fall, but I will have a couple little something somethings to denote Halloween that I'll be sharing with you in some upcoming videos. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed. Don't forget to smash that like button. Take care.